everybody. We are, at, we are here at Jack's London and I have Monica Beckworth with me. Hi Monica. You are working at Microsoft in the JVM performance team, right? Yes. And right. yeah, you had a talk about yeah, garbage collectors. That's we, yes. we used to have one garbage collector, now we have several options. Perhaps we start with the question, what are these options and what, what are the differences? Yeah, so um, with uh, OpenJDK, uh, as we're going into these newer uh, JDK versions and this um, release, faster release cadence, we also see the options of having more concurrent collectors. So at first, uh, we, w we had CMS, which was mostly concurrent collector. Uh, it did concurrent marking, and then it did concurrent uh, reclaim of the old generation, but it didn't do any compaction. So with G1 GC, you do have concurrent marking, but the compaction is stop the world. And uh, it, uh, what it does is it does uh, it reclaim the heap by copying uh, live objects into free regions. Or, uh, so it's called moving object from the from space to the to space. So the next generation of collectors that are, I think, um, added since JDK 11, are Shenandoah and ZGC. And what they do is that the whole compaction, the whole process of copying, is done concurrently with your application threads. Mm -hmm. So your application threads are mutating and then your uh, garbage collection is actually doing the work of compaction concurrently with the application. So these kind of are trying to um, go, they're geared towards the low pause requirements so G1GC is still trying to strike a balance between throughput and latency, and which is what I showed in my performance numbers. Uh, whereas uh, ZGC and Shenandoah are targeting lower latency, so at the cost of throughput, because it's concurrent work means uh, you are sharing your CPU work with the GC threads, and so it's happening at the same time with your mutated threads. So it does reduce the throughput a little bit, but you get better responsiveness from your application. Uh, uh, can you tell us or give us a, an, an advice which garbage collector to use for which purposes? Yeah, so um, so all these G1GC and Shenandoah and ZGC, they're geared towards larger heaps. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, if you want more predictable uh, responsiveness, so basically if you want pause times that are more predictable, then you would choose these lower, uh, this, this, these collectors that are geared towards uh, latency uh, optimization than, than G1GC, because G1GC tries to meet your pause time goal, but it never guarantees it. Whereas in ZGC, for example, your pause time goals will be always met because the way they do these things are they do it, uh, collections are in, in incrementally as well, and they're concurrent. Uh, with G1GC, once you have a collection set, it may, and it, it's, uh, that collection set will be collected in a pause, like the application will be paused for that time. But it may get expensive based on remembered sets or based on how popular your region is or other, other factors that may be uh, because of the thresholds that are there. So once you go into a collection phase and it stopped the world, when you're done with the collection, uh, that's when you come back and your uh, application threads resume. So that, that's not a guarantee, it's more of a best effort by G1GC. So if you need a guarantee and if you need low pause, I would say go to the concurrent uh, collectors rather than G1GC. Yeah. But if your throughput is a major concern, then stay with G1GC. What's the current state of these uh, garbage collectors? We, we just had the Java 13 release. Can yes. we already use them all? So you can use them. These are ZGC and Shenandoah are both experimental. Uh, what's interesting is Shenandoah is also going through changes with its algorithms, so it's adapting to the Baker style uh, uh, pointers, forwarding pointers that G1 and others have done in the past. Uh, it's adapting to lo uh, loaded value uh, barrier, or loaded reference barrier, which is what uh, Azul GCs as well as uh, ZGC uh, employs. So it's kind of changing from its uh, original uh, development to where it is now. So these are experimental, definitely feel free to try them, experiment and see if they meet your low pass constraints. And, um, and G1GC for that matter is the default collector since JDK 9. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's still uh, default even at JDK 13. 
Okay, you, you're working at Microsoft in the JVM performance team, yeah? What exactly are you doing there? Working on the garbage collectors too? So we do a lot of uh, different work. Well, we have a lot of internal customers at Microsoft that are like um, Java uh, based, um, and most of our work is JVM related. Mm -hmm. So we do, we do tackle uh, startup, uh, we start tackle responsiveness, we tackle throughput, and we try to understand, and we have a VM engineering team that kind of looks at startup JIT compilations and maybe escape analysis, and, and then we have the garbage collection work and maybe more of adaptiveness. How One of the biggest uh, requirements that we have is how can GC be adaptive by itself, right? Adapt to the application, so we're looking in that too. So we're doing a bunch of uh, investigations right now. Our team is very new, but we're very, uh, senior engineers and senior community people. So um, I think we do understand the need of our customers and we're trying to deliver something that would help, uh, like performance-wise, that would help them, uh, like maybe tuning or uh, or understanding and capturing requirements and stuff like that and yeah. developing Asking some because that's an interesting involvement. We had this quote by conference chair Sebastian Mayen this morning. Yeah in the opening keynote that Microsoft becomes a, or already is, a Java shop right now. Yes. So, so any comment on that? Microsoft investing heavily in Java? Yes, it is, because like I said, most of the internal customers are Java-based. So, um, I mean, there are some some projects where Java and .NET coexist even. So, uh, Microsoft definitely invests. So, Azure um, is, is heavily, at the stack yeah. is heavily Java-based as well. So, I mean, this was bound to happen, right? Um, and even even if uh, it has the best .NET engineers, Microsoft has the best .NET engineers, it still needs the Java perspective. It just still needs the community perspective and seeing where the community is going as well as uh, how Microsoft can be a part of it. Microsoft does have a lot of open source initiatives, right? And so this is one of the ways Microsoft is helping, giving back to Java as well, right? So. Uh, uh, you know, putting an effort into the Open JDK community as well. Yeah. Okay, so interesting times. Yeah. Monica, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here. Thank you so yeah. much for having me here. Thank you for watching. Thanks.